Alright, and welcome back to Don't Think Just Charge. My name's Ed, and let's paint up a Phoenix Lord. Okay, let's address the flaming axe wielding elephant in the room. This isn't actually official Fuegan, I lied to you. I recently got in contact with RTLW, who make these awesome proxy minis for Eldar, Drukhari, Orc and Imperium, amongst loads of random one-off models. In particular, the primes of their Starborn Exiles faction are just absolutely amazing. So with the announcement of Fuegan, and since I started making this video basically every other Phoenix Lord, sorry Carandress, I thought it would be cool to show off some alternatives. Well, thank you to RTLW, as they sent over the Fire Drake Prime to make a video on. A quick plug here, if you like any of these minis then check out the link below. It's an affiliate link, which means using it is going to give me a small commission for no extra cost to you. If you don't want to, it still massively helps if you could just like and subscribe, also leave a comment and they'll know you liked it and maybe they'll send me out more. I could do a whole Phoenix Lord series, so let me know if you uh, if you want to see that. Right then, okay, all that rambling and bullshit out of the way, let's talk colour choices. I think it's going to look interesting to have a dark blue in the recesses going up to a not so dark red. Kind of inspired by like flames having the blue part of the hottest, also like burnt metal gets like blues and purples. But finally I think it as a recess colour will make that main red colouring just really pop. I'm thinking these colours here as the transition. However, at the end I'm going to try and tie it all together with a wash of very thinned black templar. This means I actually want much brighter, more saturated versions of these especially for the blue, which will get most of the black shading. So, with that in mind, here are the new colours I went for. A lot of my regular painting tends to use the airbrush. It's a tool at my disposal that kind of makes it easy to get good coverage quickly. A lot of speed paint is really helped by it. However, since it's not available to everyone watching, let's go back to some more classic methods. I'm going to use dry brushing to get the main colouring for this guy. In case you don't know, dry brushing is where you remove most of the paint from the brush and quickly run it across the edges, so it only catches those. You can control how much paint you get in the mini by controlling how heavily you push the brush in, how much paint there is, and simply by going over the same area multiple times. These domed brushes aren't strictly necessary, but if you've never tried one before, then I would suggest get one, give it a try, and you'll probably like how they work. Also, the absolute authority on dry brushing, Artis Opus, always says that you don't actually want the brush properly dry, contrary to the name. So use a little sponge with a drop of water squished in and don't rub the paint off on something super absorbent like kitchen towel and you get the paint running a lot more smoothly. Okay, as you can see, I've worked up from my initial blue to purple to red. I want a little bit of edge highlighting without actually having to do edge highlighting. So, I'm also going to add in some demon red on another much lighter pass. To get an edge highlight effect, it's important to mostly move the brush perpendicular to the details. This combined with having very little paint will ensure it only comes off on the most outward facing areas. I actually want the helmet to come up as even brighter, so I use orange fire in the same manner here, just hitting the helmet in a really sparse kind of way, hardly any paint coming off on that at all. Right, now for the second part of this technique that ties it all together. If you're ever not sure about a dry brush, hit it with a shade or contrast even quite thinned down and you won't be disappointed. If it's all one colour then it's usually best to use the one you're going with, for example if I'd done this all in reds I would have used flesh tear as red to tie it all together but in this case I'm using black because it's neutral and I've used a few weird tones here. I thinned down Black Templar with Express Medium, about three parts medium to one part of paint. After that, it's a well-known technique of just slop paint all over the mini. Really important part here, once the initial layer is down, I'm gonna go and get rid of all the excess that's left on the brush, and then I'm gonna come back in and kind of move it around, making sure nothing is pooling too heavily, making sure you've got even coverage. Even with less on the mini, it's still gonna run, it just means it won't pool as much. After the first dry brush slash wash, pass it's looking cool but I think if I do another more targeted round it's gonna push up the effect even more. Remember there are no set rules to this if you can think of a way to push for the effect you imagined just do it. So back to a very light dry brush of the orange and then even pushing into yellow for the very tips followed by another black templar pass. I'm wondering if I'll get a bit more vibrancy on the helmet if I actually shade it with flesh tear as red.
Um, the jump from black shading to red is actually really obvious and it kind of throws it off a bit. So what I'll do is quickly blend in some more of the Black Templar mix so the shade kind of transitions a bit more slowly on the bottom of the helmet and the shoulders. Ah, uh, look at that. It's as cool as I hoped it would be. Okay, let's move on to some other colours and we'll be able to see if it all kind of comes together well. My Craftworld Eldar have this kind of pale grey wraithbone style equipment, so I'm going to keep to that. Ulthuan grey is used in two thinned down coats to base coat all these parts I want. I then use Nuln Oil in a kind of specific way. This is a method I tend to think of in my head as glaze shading, and involves a targeted way of applying a shade. Basically, new null oil has way less pigment in it than its old formula, but this means it works quite well as a glaze. If you make sure your brush strokes move towards where you want the most buildup and use a few layers, you can make the shading this really smooth and subtle colouring. As well as sitting in the recesses, you can also create highlight areas with your brush direction. Forcing the paint to settle more on the underside will give you some nice highlights at the top areas. Nulled oil is known as liquid talent for a reason. You can just slop it over a mini and it's going to look awesome. But with these kind of simple additional ways of using it, you can make it look even better. Cool, 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 cool. Now let's do some turquoise. The main colour for my old oil is pink, but I think that would clash here. So the turquoise and the darker purple will be my main secondaries. I use game colour turquoise on the cloak and a few other areas that look like they deserve it. Then it's more glaze shading with Drakenoff Nightshade. You can see where this method works well on parts like the knee pad, where I'm able to create nice kind of shading and transition to the dark areas just by controlling where the shade goes over a couple of layers. I'm not finished with the Drakenoff yet, but actually I want more purple than I was originally thinking. This cloak is just a tad boring all in this turquoise colour, so I'm going to add a load there. Also, those main parts between the armour panels will look good a bit different from the main armour colour, so this will be good for those. Before returning to the shades, I'm going to base all the gems in orange. I think these need to be like fiery colour, but to take them down to that dark red would kind of just blend them in with the armour and they wouldn't stand out too much. So I think what I'm going to do is make these orange right up to a very bright yellow. Therefore, orange is a good one to start with as like the darker end of the gems. While I'm here basting, I'm going to do that skull on the belt. I started using Ushabti Bone until I realised mine was basically almost dry, so then I did the second coat with Skeleton Legion. Now, with all the main colours down, I can go back to Drakenoff. That purple is actually way too light, but instead of finding a darker tone and using that, I'm just going to spend all my time shading it down a load. Probably don't do that. I use the glaze shading method over multiple passes, getting more on the purples and in the lower parts of those cloak folds. As I finished off the gems, I base the axe and ammo part of the gun. To start a cool glowing effect, I'll water down Skulker Yellow and put it in the runes and panel lines of these parts. Talking of cool effects, that gun looked like it could do with kind of a burnt up barrel. I use Basilicanum Grey with a dry brush because they're wider and firmer and just kind of stipple it on to create an uneven gradient. It also settles a bit more strongly in the shady areas because this is a contrast paint. Alright, things are looking pretty cool with all the colours down so it's time to go and neaten stuff up. Back to Ulthuan Grey and Turquoise and I'm going to block out the areas that shouldn't have any shading. Then. A bit of edge highlighting, even though I tried to escape all that shit. I use sky blue for the turquoise parts and white star for the grey.
While I'm doing all the fiddly stuff, let's get the gems done. The basics of colouring gems are that you want the dark part on the top and light part on the bottom, conversely to normal because the light is travelling through the glass. Then to represent the reflective light, you do just a little dot on top and it makes it look like that light is kind of bouncing off and travelling through. Looks really cool there. So I highlight up with skulky yellow and then ice yellow progressively lower down in the gem, then white star just to add that little reflective highlight. Now I'm going to get a cool burny effect on the axe and ammo pack. I start with Sanguine Scarlet and do a kind of messy stipple dry brush. I'm making sure to do the opposite of a regular dry brush here, using enough paint to leave an obvious texture. I focus it on the edges of the blade and kind of build it up slowly, then move on to burnt brown red and do the same. I use a smaller brush that I cut and messed up specifically for these types of jobs here, to be more concise with where the paint ends up. And that's the paint job. I did a few more neatening things off screen, like the eyes, because they were just so fiddly to do with the camera in my face. Apart from that, it was all repeats of previous steps, just a little bit more like shading and edge highlighting, a quick job on the base, and this is the end result. There we go then. The blue, purple, red thing I did at the start maybe could have been left a bit more obvious. You can only really slightly see the blue tones in one or two places, but overall I'm very happy with this guy as my Fuegan. If you watched this far then, thank you so much. A Phoenix Lord is on their way to let you try on their armour right now. As I said at the start, let me know if you'd like to see like a little series of these Phoenix Lords and I'll see if we can set that up with RTLW. Also, links below, go check out their stuff, it's really awesome. Go buy some stuff from my affiliate links. Okay, bye!